Okay, uh, obviously that's uh, enough excitement for one night. Uh, it's a good win for our team. Uh, what I uh, shared with them in the locker room that uh, uh, you're going to have some games like that when you when you play in a league that uh, that has uh, quality football teams uh, that are that are very well coached uh, and prepared. And so uh, we knew going in it was going to be a battle. Uh, their quarterback has uh, has made plays throughout the season and. Um, he made some plays tonight. There was times that uh, uh, we tried to get some pressure on him and play man coverage, and uh, he pulled the ball down, took off, and, and made a few runs on third and fourth down to extend their drives. And um, they're a good football team. They're they're in the right spot to, in most uh, cases on defense. They're good on special teams. Um, we worked hard on coverage units, and we were really good except for one return. Uh, and uh, we had some good returns ourselves. So, um, other than the turnovers, we, we lost that battle. I know that we, uh, let's see, we had uh, how many turn, how many fumble? We lost two and had two picks, right? So, we had four and they had one. So, uh, we were minus three. Uh, what was it? We had two. So, they had two. So, we were minus two. And um, we've been, uh, in the plus category, and so you see what happens if you turn the ball over. Um, you you give yourself a chance to, or you take away the chance to win the game. Gives you give yourself a chance to lose the game. So, anyway, um, we got to do a better job taking care of the football. Um, but I was proud of our players and um, be able to enjoy this one tonight and then go back to work tomorrow. Klein's a pretty tough kid. He's a good player. Uh, he's, a, he's a good runner. Uh, he's smart. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Um, made some some good throws down the field, and uh, you know he's a good football player. How did you guys prepare for him during the week, Mike? Did you have somebody that you know, kind of scout team guy? We rotated guys in, John, uh, for quarterback run, and and then to, to try to get get a guy on the perimeter a little bit. Uh, it's always the uh, most difficult part. In, in preparing for a quarterback like that is to try to simulate um, his ability to run inside the line of scrimmage, you know, in, inside the tackles. Um, most guys in, uh, in your demonstration squad don't want to do that. And, you know, he does a nice job. He's patient and he lets that hole open up and he's a, he's a big, strong runner. So we do the best we can to simulate it, but it's difficult. Well, I think so, and and I've said this now um, for several weeks that you know this is college football has turned into March Madness. It starts the first week in September, and so um, I just don't know that there's going to be many teams uh, that can make it through till the end that don't have some close calls. Uh, it's just the way it is. You're you're going to play when you play a schedule that's got enough opponents that. Uh, if you lose the turnover battle, which we did tonight, you, you take a chance on losing the game. And so, um, you know, you're just kind of glad to get out of it and go on down the road. What do you learn about your team? Well, our guys know how to win games. Uh, I told them in the locker room that, uh, you know, I've been involved off and on with Oklahoma State football for almost a quarter of a century. I think it's 21 or 22 years. I forgot, get lost count now. And uh, I've been uh, here a lot of years when uh, the other team would have first down on the four-yard line at the end of the game, and we didn't stop them. Uh, and I've been around our defense now for a couple years, and uh, they're finding a way to stop people. It doesn't guarantee it's going to happen, uh, but I, I believe that uh, they um, find a way to get it done somehow, and I think there's something to be said about that. Uh, a couple times in the fourth quarter, they didn't. And our offense stepped up and rallied. And they found a way to get it done. When, when they tied the game, how would you describe the sideline? Which time? <laughs> I mean, the second time. Yeah, I'm, uh, and honestly, I don't even know what the, was that 45 to 45 or? Our guys are OK. Um, I just think they play with a lot of confidence. We have mature leadership. I don't see any panic. And um, I, I think they're comfortable. I, I really do. I, I think they believe in themselves. They believe in the system. 
our coaches do a good job of keeping their composure. They don't panic. And so in most cases, young people that are looking for leaders, they're always going to look to their coaches. And if their coaches don't panic, they're not going to panic. I didn't feel either one of them. Uh, I didn't even know we had an earthquake last night until uh, Lisa Salters told me in the pregame uh, what I thought of the earthquake. And I didn't know which one she was talking about. She said, we had one here at 2.40, 2.15 in the morning. I said, 2.15 in the morning? I don't have any chance of hearing an earthquake. I'm out. And she said that uh, we had one, and then somebody said we had one just a second ago. Is that right? I, I was unaware of that one. So at this, at this point in the year, I'm oblivious to a lot of things that happen. Mike, you're probably going to be ranked second when all the polls come out tomorrow, which would uh, make the guys poised or make it to the championship game in the end. What are your thoughts about that? Well, it's the same as uh, it was the last few weeks. We've been fortunate enough that we started the season high enough in the polls and we've had enough success to where, you know, we kind of hang around there and that's really what it is. You, know, you just try to hang around and show up the last week. So uh, there's still a lot of football to be played. Uh, back on the road next week, anytime you go on the road in this league, you're, you know, there's potential danger. Uh, so our players have to understand that. And I think we approach them uh, the same way is that, you know, it's where you're at. You're not going to hide it. Everybody knows. And so uh, they have to realize the importance of getting back down to earth. Uh, we haven't gone into a game, uh, just about every game we've played uh, the last three or four games. Those guys are ready to play, and they bring their A game. And so you're going to get the same thing next week when you go to Lubbock. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, <clears throat> getting our guys back down, um, trying to get them to focus and absorb information in meetings, be able to practice well, and put everything else aside. Because ultimately, it's not going to matter anyway. The only thing that matters is our preparation and how we play in Lubbock. That's the only thing that matters right now. Well, they were really excited, and uh, and I want them to be. They should be, uh, because there's a lot of work, uh, a lot of time, and a lot of effort that goes into these games. It started last January, and uh, they were excited. They need to be able to enjoy each other, and that's part of college athletics. Uh, that's part of the reason that coaches enjoy being around their players. And so uh, they were uh, thrilled, uh, and I think the atmosphere was that way because of the way the game went. And so uh, they're celebrating, and they should, deservingly so. How does this challenge compare to what you guys face at a like Very similar. Similar circumstances. Uh, started out really good for us. We're ahead. And uh, <clears throat> I, I wish I had an answer for when we're playing at home and we get way up on somebody and then they end up coming back and tying us or we fall behind. That's happened to us a number of times, and I, uh, I don't know why that happens. But uh, the feeling on the sideline and the emotion of the team was very similar uh, to uh, A&M. But uh, the, the advantage and the one thing that I like about our team is, is they really don't flinch very much. You know, they just, they just keep playing. So as long as they do that, uh, you know, so be it. When you need to get basically two game winning drives in the last five minutes, how comfortable do you feel with the training Well, Brandon made two bad decisions early in the game. Um, this is probably a long, drawn out answer for your short question, but he uh, he didn't see the coverage rotate on the post ball to, to Blackman and he held the ball on the interception they returned for a touchdown. He held the ball too long instead of letting go of it. Brandon's strength is to be able to let go of the ball right now. So other than that, from that point on, I'm going to say he played almost a perfect game. I think he had one other mistake. And he was almost perfect from that point on. Uh, he actually threw the ball away a couple times, made some good decisions. But I, I don't know uh, anybody in the country that I would rather have than him in those situations because he's so calm and collected. And there's, I'm not, there's other good quarterbacks out there. I'm sure a guy at Stanford, he did a nice job last week doing that. And, you know, there's other guys out there. I'm just saying I like our guy, and I wouldn't trade him for anybody.
similar story for black men. So punch, mm -hmm. ball up to the one, you know, got to maybe go up and put that thing away. Right. But then he comes back. You know, and when when that happens, John, uh, you know, you got to be able to overcome it, and you got to stick him back out there. You know, you never take a guy like that out. You got to coach him and put him right back out there because he's a difference maker. He needs to take care of the football better. Um, he gets a little bit excited, tries to do too much at times. He just needs to play his game. He's a a big time player when he just plays within himself. He gets a little excited, tries to make too much out of it. Um, but the one fumble on the uh, on the one yard line, were we up by ten then? I can't remember. How much? Oh, we were only up by three, so that would have put us back up by ten. And you you cost yourself points because you're on the one yard line, but more importantly, you swing momentum. You know, you you kind of take the air out of your sails and you put them in there, put it in theirs. So at, at times that affects you more so than than the actual fumble. Last, last question. We got some folks coming in for Cooper and Smith. Were they game time decisions? Excuse me. Cooper and uh, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, Josh. Yeah, Josh didn't really um, feel good on Thursday, so we decided to go ahead and hold him. And then Jeremy Smith. I don't think he played today, did he? Yeah, he he should be fine this week. Jeremy hurt his hand, and uh, he's got a. Uh, a mechanism in place to play. But see, we only had uh, 63 plays. So we weren't into, because of the style of play that Kansas State had, we weren't into a situation where we were going to get 90 plays. And uh, so there wasn't any reason to put him in there. He'll be much better this week, and then he'll even be better the next. So um, Coach Singleton made that decision based on how the game went. We could have played him. Good. Thank you.